hope you're all keeping safe and well. Our first song today is I Love You Jesus, a song I know you like to sing. True Story of Mary Jones, Part 4 Eventually, as the sun was dawning, the town of Bala came into view. Mary's heart pounded with excitement. She had made it to her destination. From the brow of the hill, she could see candle lights beginning to flicker in cottage windows. With renewed energy and determination, she set off down the hill. With no idea which house Mr. Charles lived in, Mary began to knock doors and ask the bar, bar locals for directions to the right house. After going from door to door, she was given the information she needed and ran up the path to a large door which she knocked loudly with anticipation. The door was answered by Reverend Thomas Charles. Mary wasted no time on the doorstep, pouring out her reason for visiting. Sir, I've just walked 25 miles to get here. I've been saving up for six years to buy a Bible. I've got the money here. You can count it if you like. Please, can I have a Bible? Mr. Charles was taken aback. He looked at Mary's poor clothing and hands that had obviously worked hard. He invited her in with the words, You had better come in and tell me all about it. But first, you must have something to eat. You must be famished. He kindly arranged for his housekeeper to prepare food for Mary in his kitchen. After she had eaten her food, her story was told. Mary eagerly shared everything, how she had so wanted her own Bible since she was nine, and how she had worked and saved hard for six years to raise all the money required. She told the Reverend how a school had opened which, which she had attended to learn how to read. There followed many questions from Mr. Charles but Mary was at ease answering them. Mary told how she loved God and wanted to learn more and more of his word. Mr. Charles was moved as he listened to the story of this truly amazing young girl. Her love for God was evident and her thirst for a Bible was like nothing he had witnessed before. We can only imagine how Mary felt as Mr. Charles broke terrible news to her. Oh, Mary, I'm so sorry. I cannot help. I do not have a Welsh Bible to spare. Mary sank down. His devastating words made her eyes instantly well with tears. She buried her head in her hands and began to weep uncontrollably. With a deep despair, she thought, all my work and savings have been for nothing. 
Mr Charles watched on as the tears rolled down Mary's cheeks. He was heartbroken for her when he witnessed how much having a Bible would have meant to her. But then Mr Charles had an idea.